resources that we're using. So up until this point, we also haven't chosen to put bathing facilities or bathrooms into any of the private structures. Those, we have a, a couple of showers that are in, in our common house, plus we have a, a bathhouse on a complex that has a couple of showers in it. I'd say, you know, and if somebody designed a house that want, and they wanted to have a shower or bathtub in it, I don't think that would be a big deal. I think that would be fine. But I'd say the main reason why we have chosen not to is once again the resource usage, specifically having to do with the hot water. That we have actually, with one exception, the homes have, are plumbed with cold water, they're plumbed with electricity but they don't have hot water. It takes a lot of energy to heat up water and it makes a lot more sense wherever you're using a lot of energy, it makes a lot more sense to figure out how to use that as efficiently as possible. And say, for example, we're gonna heat up a lot of hot water. We're always gonna have hot water in our common house. That's gonna be available for cooking, for washing dishes, for laundry, for showers. And that's going to get frequent usage throughout the day with everybody taking their showers there. If you separated and had hot water in everybody's separate houses, we would definitely be looking at an on-demand hot water system, which is certainly possible. Either a gas power on-demand system, or there's some pretty inexpensive and pretty effective wood-fired on-demand systems that I've actually been interested in getting a couple of here, but it's expensive. So any additional expensive item that you don't have to duplicate many times in individual homes, and you can just have one or two or three for the entire group in a centralized location, just makes sense from a financial and an energy, an energy standpoint. Water and the usage of water also has a lot of other issues associated with it. One of which is what happens to the water after you use it. And it's kind of easier to, again, there's a kind of an economy of scale issue that we have great water systems that are developed here to use our wastewater from our common house and from our common bathing facility quite efficiently. And it's worth putting the energy into developing those systems and making them work really well because there's a fairly high flow of water through those systems. Our individual houses with their, you know, sinks that get, you know, maybe somebody uses them for brushing their teeth a couple times a day or washing a few dishes. There's just not much throughput of water to make it worthwhile to put a lot of energy into reclaiming that. Most of us have very, very simple great water systems from our houses. The water does get used for the most part for example, directly onto some trees that are right outside the house, but there isn't, there isn't a very efficient usage of that water. So larger scale systems, and, and another great example of this uh, would be biogas digesters and methane production, which we know people who design and install very simple low tech techniques for composting waste and making making gas that can be used for cooking or, or other kinds of usages. The thing is that it requires a lot of material to make that work. So for example, in China, my understanding is one of the ways they do that is they have, they'll have a communal toilet for, the, for an entire village of hundreds of people, maybe a few toilets that all go into a single tank. The tank is then digested and composted and all that gas is used, it's, it's, it's collected in one place and can be distributed from that point out, as opposed to having to have a separate biogas digester in everybody's home, people wouldn't be able to afford it for one thing, and it would be very inefficient in terms of using the material. Because a lot of what I'm here for, it feels like to me, is to create a relationship with the place where I live. And I have a pretty developed relationship with my home, with my, my structure that I built with my hands, that I sleep in, that I know every single detail 
I know for the most part where every board and where every piece of wood in my house came from. Most of them I cut down. A lot of those were in were within sight of where my house is now. And I can I can look at a a, a pole in my house and say, oh yeah, that used to be growing over there. So one of the things that we're deliberately designing into our lifestyle here is that we spend a lot of time outdoors. We because our, our toilet facilities are, are outside of our houses, our shower facilities are outside of our houses, our common house, which is our primary cooking and social gathering place, is separate from our individual homes. We at the very least spend a lot of time moving back and forth between those different structures. Also just a lot of, you know, our our livelihood here, our gardening, our crafts. We're increasingly hoping to have a lot more interaction with the forest and sustainable forest management and that sort of thing. All of that stuff is outside. Almost all of our recreation in the summertime is outside, swimming in the pond, playing games. We In the summertime, we eat outside almost, almost exclusively. And what that enables, I think, is a much richer relationship to develop between the people and the place where they live as opposed to in a circumstance where we spend a lot more more of our time inside our homes.